So, as you may remember from last episode, I lost the audio fo footage not only for the end of day 5, but also for the entirety of day 6. That means I don't have any commentary over the actual video footage that I've, uh, that I've taken, but since I'm already on day 8 or so in terms of what I've recorded, I've decided that instead of redoing the day, I'm just going to dub over it with a little uh, narration style thing as post-commentary. This is my first time doing post-commentary, so it might be a little weird, but uh, let's get started, I suppose. Alright. Welcome to the forest navel. Here we see our intrepid explorer is going to use his newfound Pikmin in order to recover more of the 30 missing ship parts. Let us hope that he will be successful in his quest. First, we see Olimar goes to the Red Onion to take out several of his Red Pikmin. After some hesitance, he decides to take out all 88 of his stock. Is this a wise decision? We might not know until later. For now, we watch as the Pikmin come flooding out of their home in order to brave the forces of danger. While walking to the site of the boss battle, Olimar decides to go to the nearby patch of grass in order to get some sap. This will allow his Pikmin to become flower Pikmin, thus becoming more strong, more agile, and more effective for combat. This will undoubtedly prove to be a wise decision when Olimar utilizes his Pikmin in combat later on in the episode. Walking through the gateway that he cleared out at the end of last episode, he encounters upon the boss's lair. Passing through some fire jets to reach it, he encounters a smaller distraction on his way to get there. A Wallywog. Wallywogs are very dangerous creatures that can easily dispatch large groups of Pikmin. However, our intrepid explorer is easily able to utilize his Pikmin count to kill the Wallywog with minimal casualties. After calling all his Pikmin back, he enters the boss's main chamber in order to tackle the Puff Stool. The Puff Stool is a terrifying creature that is able to use its own spores to allow Pikmin to attack their owners. However, Olimar is able to utilize his Pikmin forces in order to defeat the Puff Stool with no trouble at all. Cameron is very surprised at this development and uh, expresses the utmost gratitude for the simplicity of this battle. However, then comes the issue of carrying back the Puff Stool's carcass and the treasure gained from its defeat. Both items are very heavy, but they both carry a huge reward. The Omega Stabilizer is one of the ship parts required in order to beat the game. The Puff Stool's carcass will give you 50 Pikmin of the color of your choice. Cameron decides to use this for the blue Pikmin, simply because he needs more of those for the following area. As he carries the newfound treasures back to the Onion and the ship, he remarks on how good of a day this has been so far, and how well it will go in the future. However, tragedy strikes as soon as he walks through a field of sheer wigs and sheer grubs. The bugs eat his poor, unsuspecting Pikmin, causing mass deaths and the inability to carry back the Omega Stabilizer. The Pikmin there are formed completely helpless, as the sheer wigs and sheer grubs consume more and more. The situation continues to worsen, as more and more Pikmin die. Cameron decides to check the name of the part again for some strange reason, despite the fact that he knows very well that it's called the Omega Stabilizer. Silly Cameron, you don't know what you're doing, do you? He's almost defeated the final sheer Shearwig. This is a good thing. However, he finds that he only has 27 Pikmin and not the required 30 to carry back the Omega Stabilizer. While this has happened, the Pikmin have unsuspectingly carried the Puffstool's carcass back to the Red Onion instead of the Blue, thus giving him 50 Pikmin, but of the wrong color. Oh dear. Isn't that unfortunate. However, Cameron decides that he might as well pluck his newfound 50 Red Pikmin, and perhaps he will find a use for them in the near future.
it takes a little while. Okay, a big while. Now with 100 red Pikmin in hand, Olimar returns to the site of the Omega Stabilizer in hopes of retrieving it for future recovery. Frustrated with his Pikmin troops' actions for the day, and especially at his loss of Pikmin and time, Olimar is frustrated. However, he remains diligent on getting the Omega Stabilizer back to the ship in order to continue his quest. He checks the map, but then quickly gets out of it. Olimar is looking for another ship part to get on this day, hopefully reaching a total of two instead of simply one. Cameron decides that he doesn't quite want to fight a boss just yet, because he just fought one even though it was really easy but instead would like to go towards one of the more puzzle sections. This is most likely a good idea. In order to do this, he will need all three colors of Pikmin, not just red. So Olimar returns to the base with his squadron and gets ready to extract some more Pikmin. There are two ship parts currently in the map that we have not recovered and don't plan to today. The other two will be extracted today, and instead leaving the two remaining for another time. The Omega Stabilizer is just one. Olimar hopes to get one more. decides to put away many of his red Pikmin in favor of retrieving 15 blue and 15 yellow Pikmin. This will undoubtedly prove to be a wise choice in the near future. After deciding to retrieve these Pikmin from their onions, he has another change of heart and decides to put back a number of red Pikmin. And there we have it. The Omega Stabilizer is finally recovered and the fin of the dolphin is whole again. Things are finally beginning to, beginning to look up for Olimar. Cameron comments on the fact that we don't entirely need 30 ship parts in order to get the good ending. But the best ending does require all 30. Meanwhile, Olimar's ship, the dolphin, has gained a new level of adequacy and now is able to extend its search to a wider area. It is around this time that Cameron remarks on what he's going to do for the future. Tomorrow, instead of discovering the new area that he's found, he is going to return to the impact site instead, and build up his Pikmin squadron as well as acquiring the one remaining ship part that resides there. We're going to need a lot of blue Pikmin in the future, and Cameron is wary of this. So he decides to bring all of his Pikmin, all 60 of them, 30 reds, 15 blues, and 15 yellows, over to the site of the puzzle. Well, not really a puzzle per se, but really just a test to see if you know what all the Pikmin do. Not very difficult. In order to get there, we're going to need to put the Pikmin on this bridge. Fascinating. The Pikmin build the bridge very, very slowly. The Pikmin continue to build the bridge, as Olimar waits. Again, may I remark on how slowly these Pikmin are building their bridge. It has begun to become frustrating. Hello. 
Olimar decides to drink a nice hot cup of tea while waiting for the Pikmin to finish their bridge. The tea is delicious, and tastes faintly of lemon. While waiting, Olimar reads the great novel 1984 by George Orwell. It is a fascinating story about a dystopian future in which a man named Winston tries to rebel against the government. Fascinating. The Pikmin are very close now to finishing their bridge and Olimar tries to help. But because he is in a spacesuit, he can't do much. Cameron expresses frustration at the fact that we are practically there. But then the bridge is finished, so it doesn't matter really in the end. Then comes the puzzle. Fifteen yellow Pikmin are required for this portion, so it's good that Cameron has exactly fifteen yellow Pikmin. However, he doesn't know it, and throws up only ten. He then calls his blue Pikmin to attack this geyser. It is imperative that blue Pikmin are used here as to the fact that they can survive underwater. Now Cameron will realize his folly as he tosses his only ten yellow Pikmin up to this newfound item, but then realizes that it requires fifteen. Luckily Cameron came prepared for this very incident, and has five spare yellow Pikmin at his side. Returning with his extra troops, he will use his new Pikmin in order to carry the item down from its perch atop the mountain. It is the Libra, a gift given to Olimar by his daughter. Cameron remarks on how this characterizes Olimar as more than just an astronaut. He approves. Cameron also remarks that you will need red Pikmin to carry this back to the rocket ship, just because they have to cross through the fire and the flames yet again. An epic guitar solo soon follows. It was totally rad. Cameron then mentions that in the future games, Pikmin 2 and 3, a little more has gone into depth about Olimar's character, but for now, all we know is that he is an astronaut with a family at home that he's desperately trying to get back to. However, despite the shortcomings of his Red Pikmin squadron early in the day, Cameron is ultimately satisfied at the actions of his troops and the accomplishment of his Pikmin. He confirms his choice to go to the impact site tomorrow and hopefully, hopefully build up his blue Pikmin squadrons. But until then, all we can do is return the Libra to the ship. Cameron also goes on to remark that the Libra is not a required ship part, and you can still get the good ending without actually collecting it. Fantastic. And now the waiting game begins, as Cameron puts back his Pikmin into the onions and prepares for the night ahead of him. It's time to rest now, little ones. And then Cameron gets the absolutely bright idea to go get more bomb rocks in order to break down some of those pesky walls surrounding the onion. This is a stupid idea. You don't have enough time, Cameron. As we can see clearly on the screen, we need to hurry up, as it is almost sundown. The 
The Libra is returned to the ship and mysteriously floats in midair, even though the sparkles occurred on the bottom of the ship. Honestly, not sure why that happened. He then goes to Sunset, satisfied yet also frustrated at the actions of his Pikmin during the previous day. Polomar prepares for his journey to the Impact Site tomorrow, hoping that it will bring greater luck and greater harvests. The SS Dolphin blasts off for the night. The Wallywog is disappointed that he didn't get to crush any Pikmin. Kind of weird, considering he doesn't actually eat them. I guess he's just a sadist. The distant spring is what's for tomorrow. As you might be able to guess, we're going to need a lot of blue Pikmin. Right now we only have 26. 26 is not a lot of blue Pikmin. There are 10 ship parts in the distant spring. We will be getting none of them tomorrow. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed my post commentary. And I hope the great Morgan Freeman enjoyed it too, even though he probably wasn't watching this. Good day to all of you.